another Splatoon game, another round of lovely shopkeepers inspired by real animals from our real oceans. It's always a joy to see what the Splatoon team comes up with for their new character designs. They're always so wacky and weird, and these Splatoon 3 shopkeepers did not disappoint. So let's take a look at the animals that inspired them. Let's start with Gnarly Eddie, who is based on a Nautilus. These are such unique animals. They are cephalopods like squids and octopuses, but they have an external shell. They're the only living cephalopods to have one. Shelled cephalopods were a lot more common hundreds of millions of years ago, but nowadays, Nautilus is the odd one out. If you saw my video on real animals I'd love to see as Splatoon characters, you already know I was really hoping for a Nautilus character, and I'm so excited to see it realized. I think they did a great job. The tentacle hair and feet is very funky looking. So much personality in the design. And the shell is a really cool interpretation of the Nautilus shell, which, like Eddie's, is totally smooth on the outside, even though the inside has these intricate chambers that it pumps water and gas through to control its buoyancy, helping it to swim and float. The animal itself only lives in that big outermost section. Compare that to, say, a snail like like nails here, and it's very different, with the snail shell just having one big space inside that the whole animal takes up. Both animals have squishy bodies inside a shell, but they don't have all that much else in common. Except for the fact that they both run a stylish hat shop, of course. Next, let's take a look at Gel La Fleur. His name references the French word for flower, and his Japanese name, Hanagasa, means flower hat, cluing us in that this shopkeeper draws inspiration from the flower hat jelly, which is found off the coast of southern Japan. If you take a look at its translucent bell with darker vertical stripes, there's a very clear resemblance. Compared to Gelonzo and Gelfonzo, Gel La Fleur has these extra thin tentacles that hang from the head itself. And one of the unique things about flower hat jellies is how their tentacles will coil up and stick to the bell itself when not in use. And when they are in use, they have a very painful sting, so, you know. Watch out for this guy. Now, I've also got to mention the name of this clothing shop in English, which is Mana Wardrobe, referring to a strange and fascinating creature called the Portuguese Mana War, or Pacific Mana War. Looking at those sort of floppy chin things, as well as the length of those thin tentacles, there is a bit of a resemblance to the Man o' War here as well. The Man o' War is not really a jellyfish, but a siphonophore, a fascinating type of marine creature that is really made up of a colony of individuals that all work together as one. We had another type of siphonophore featured in the Deep Sea Metro of Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion, so I could definitely see this as taking inspiration from both as part of Gel Luffler's design. The Splatoon 3 Direct just calls him a jellyfish, and you know, I've never really been one to nitpick species classifications. I just think it's fun to see where these character inspirations might have come from in our real oceans. Side note, I didn't mention this in my previous shopkeeper video, but I did in this other video. But I think Gelfonso is also referencing a not technically a jellyfish creature called the comb jelly, with those thin vertical rainbow structures that are similar to the comb jelly's cilia. But enough about jellies, we gotta talk about Mr. Coco. I don't even know how to feel about Mr. Coco. He's very shiny, but you know what? I love that because shiny. That's right, just like Moana's Tamatoa and the Pokemon Crab Brawler, Mr. Coco is based on a coconut crab, which is actually a land crab, but it's still very ocean dependent. They're born in the ocean, live by the coast, and actually need to be wet to breathe, even though they breathe air. Their breathing organs are like something in between lungs and gills. It's interesting. Coconut crabs are the largest terrestrial arthropod, the group that includes bugs and crustaceans. Like, they are really big. The color of these crabs can vary, but it does tend to have a bluish tint. It's kind of hard to see the blue on Mr. Coco, but it's there. He's also got more legs than I noticed at first. They're called coconut crabs because coconuts are their main source of food. They can break them apart very effectively. And that's not the only thing they can break apart. They can also be brutal predators to birds and small mammals. So yeah, don't mess with these shopkeepers is the moral of the story. 
Can I just say I'm thrilled that Splatoon has made a tradition of a crustacean shoe shop owner. Crabs are my favorite animals and Splatoon 3 does not disappoint in the crab department. Next we have Harmony who works the general store. Harmony is based on an anemone like Annie from Splatoon 1. There are several species that can have these pink tentacles with green tips, for example the magnificent sea anemone and the condi anemone. Harmony is actually a member of the Chirpy Chips, a band within the Splatoon universe that plays some of the background music that you hear in Turf War. Some of my favorite soundtracks too, so that was really neat to learn about. She also has a clownfish with her which are known to live alongside anemone providing each other with mutual benefits like protection and food. Although maybe Harmony isn't holding up her end of the bargain as her fish is looking kind of colorless and ghost-like. In fact, according to the Hikara Walker Splatoon 2 art book, the fish may be dying from neglect. Now, despite the orange coloring like Splatoon 1's Mo being the most well-known for clownfish, a black and white coloring can also be found in nature. And a lot of clownfish naturally turn darker in color as they age. But they can also lose their color if they're not feeling well, so let's hope Harmony can turn things around if that's the case. Finally, Sheldon and Merch make a return. I talked about them in my other shopkeeper video, but as a quick mention, Sheldon is a horseshoe crab, one of my favorite animals. Like the Nautilus, they're considered living fossils because they've been around since the days of the dinosaurs and look pretty darn similar to the way they did long ago, which is so cool. Merch is a sea urchin. In my other video, I mentioned how he might be based on a different species than Spike, given his thick, banded spines. And since he's now older and the spines still have that appearance, I'm even more convinced that that's the case. There's a lot of urchin species out there, but I'd guess that Merch is based on something like a slate pencil urchin, while Spike is something like a purple urchin. Interestingly, they do resemble the two sea urchins found in Animal Crossing New Horizons. A lot of Splatoon's dev team does work on Animal Crossing, including producer Mr. Nogami. So it's been kind of fun to notice how many of Animal Crossing's sea creatures also happen to be Splatoon characters. In any case, it's great to see Mersh making a grand return alongside all of the weird and wonderful shopkeepers in Splatoon 3. So which one of the Splatoon 3 shopkeepers is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and consider subscribing to my channel to see more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and stay fresh.